Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher, but I also love to doodle. So for this month, I am creating 31 videos with doodles, Zentangle patterns, and just some Zentangle inspired art pages. So today is day 30 of our 31 prompts, and I'm using prompts from cutelittlepaper.com. And today's prompt is sprouting plant. I apologize, my kitten ate my paper. So sprouting plant. And I was thinking what would have been a good one for this was day number 13, the sprinkle. That would have been a really good sprouting plant one. But since we already did it, we'll come up with something new. Let's find our next clean page right after the bunnies. Here we go. Okay, day 30. So what I thought we could do today is a Zentangle pattern called Poke Root. And if you've been doing Zentangle for a while, then you might already know this one. I'm going to do Poke Root and also Poke Leaf. And those are both by Zentangle. All right. So this is more of just kind of a leafy little thing. And I, I'm kind of going off the sprouting part because they do sort of grow off of each other. So um, if you would rather doodle an actual plant sprouting from the ground for spring, then please, please, please feel free to do that. But this is what I'm going to do today. Okay. So poke root and poke leaf are from the same little family. And let me grab a piece of scrap paper to show you. Oh, here, I've got a little pad. So poke root is going to be a little stem with a top and then a circle. Isn't that cute? It's like a little berry. That is poke root. Poke leaf is similar, so it's got the little stem and the topper, but this one comes around and goes to a point comes around and goes to a point. Poke root, poke leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start right about here and I'm just gonna kind of fill this area. And if you know me, I love Zentangle patterns because they just repeat over and over and over again. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we're gonna start with this little stem can make it as short or as long as you want. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit for this. Okay. And then we put on this little cap and then we make a circle. And the circle starts on one side of the stem, goes around and ends on the other side. So, so cute. This is one of the most popular tangles from Zentangle. Okay, so the next one, this is where it gets not tricky, but um, it just kind of, it's up to you where you want these to come out of. So you can have them coming out of, you know, the sides here, off the top. You can do them kind of looping together if you want, but I'm just gonna make a cluster. So my next stem, I'm just gonna go like this and put it off to the side. And I put on that little topper, that little curve. And I want mine to kind of bump into this one. I'm going to make that one nice and large. And that one ended up being about the size of my fingernail. Then I can do another one. I'm going to do another one off to the side over here. Put a little top on it and then make that circle. And if it bumps into one, just let it tuck in behind. See, this is like a sprouting plant, isn't it? And then we can just keep adding more. So you can put these little stems wherever you want. Put on the little top. And curve around. Do one this way. And this one's going to really be hiding back behind, but it fills in some of that space, so I kind of like that. So 
So let's add a couple of poke leaves now that we've sort of got the hang of this. So I'm going to do one right here. A little top on it. And then we come around to a point. Little top, come around to a point. So see how these are just sort of building off of each other? And you can vary what you put on the end. It doesn't just have to be a circle or this little pointy thing. You can make it fancier if you want. I'm going to tuck in a poke root here, which is the circle. So I'm just going to keep changing the shape that I'm putting in. And we can even have them kind of coming down. So some of mine look like they're extensions, you know, like this is going through all of them, but I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to stagger them a little bit. So then also I want to point out that if you have little tiny spaces in between, then we can go back and we can ink in those areas and just sort of make it dark behind there like there's this bundle of little leaves and berries and then the background is nice and dark. If your areas are too large and you don't want to do that, you don't have to. So I just want to show that. Doesn't that look kind of nice? Sometimes our little leaves and berries are too far apart. And in that case, you could maybe just add some striping or some dotting, or you could just fill it in with some pencil shading. If this is your first time doing these, it, sometimes it takes a few times to kind of get the hang of it. All right, I'm going to keep going, so I'm going to come up this way. And if you're doing that little leafy pattern, you could make that bottom part more like a heart. So look, I can bump out and then up. See how I made that more of a heart? That's kind of a fun little pattern. And I'm gonna ink in those little areas. Isn't this so pretty? All right, let's keep going. I really love this. I'm gonna make another droopy one hanging out down here. Oh, 
Okay, before I go on, I wanna show you a couple of little embellishments that you can do. So on these round ones, I like to just put like a little reflection. It just kind of makes them look more round. And then on the leafy ones, one really fun thing that you can do, I'm gonna do it on this one up here, is you take one of the sides and you just kind of add this little swooping down and back up. And then it looks like the um, edge of the leaf is kind of turned over a little bit. Isn't that kind of fun? And then when you shade it, you can kind of darken that. That's sort of a cool little embellishment. Also, you can just put in some reflections on those. Or of course, you could decorate inside of them. So this one right here, I'm just gonna put in some stripes. Whatever you wanna do, this is your page. Few more. All right, I think I'm just about done. I want to spend a little bit of time showing you how to shade these. So I'm going to ink in those little spaces in between. So this is one of those tango patterns that is so pretty by itself, um, but it's also so pretty combined with other tangles. Such a great little little thing to make, nice and organic. All right. So of course you could add um, an aura, you could aura this whole piece. Or if you were making one, you could just aura an individual one. You could also add just some like little dots if you wanted, just to make it a little more organic looking. You could add some fescue, which is those little lines with uh, little teardrops on the top. Those are kind of fun. There we go. All right, so to shade these, grab my little blending tool here and my pencil. All right, so what I love to do with these is do the overlapping shadows. So I'm gonna pick this very first one down here, and it's really only going over this one and maybe that one a little bit. So I'm gonna shade those. Then I'm also gonna shade where the stem tucks in. So under that little curve, I'm just giving it a tiny bit of a shadow. Then I take my blending tool and I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow opposite of the reflection. So then I go to this next one here, I'm gonna put some under the curve. 
and then anywhere it goes over another pattern. So it goes over this one and a little bit over that one. And under here, and then I like to do that opposite side of the reflection. So now really quickly, I'm just going to do the under the little curves. So I'm just going to put a little bit under every curve. And that'll save time. I don't have to do every one individually. Okay. And then I can just soften each of those little undersides. All right, and then I'm gonna go individually to every single one. And if it goes over a stem or over a berry or a leaf, I'm going to add a little shadow. So then this one goes over up here. This one goes over these two. This one just goes over some little stems. So you're going on the outside of each shape and where it overlaps, add that little shadow. I probably could do a whole video on shading because I know it's a little bit tricky. So just look at each shape. See if it goes over anything. And then going back with your blending tool and just trying to remember, just kind of look at each little one and see where it goes over things and then soften that. I realize I'm probably doing this much, much faster than you are. So please feel free to pause it and um, take your time. And of course you never have to shade, it's just if you want to. All right, I think I got all of them. I'm gonna take my blending tool now. I'm gonna darken those little folds that I made. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading the opposite side of those reflections. I'm sure there's a science behind this. I don't know it, so I'm just guessing. Okay. All right, there we go. There's our sprouting plant. If you want, you can put some um, shading on the outside edge of the whole thing. Look at how I just did that. You can always add some graphite to your blending tool. Just give this slight little shadow on the outside, kind of lifting it off the paper. There we go. Poke root, poke leaf from Zentangle. I think it looks beautiful. I hope that you have fun with it. And we will see you tomorrow for our last day in March. I can't believe it. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.